I'm gonna no, go ahead. say a few words. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll, we'll continue. What's up, man? It's How nice you doing? Oh man, my, my pleasure, bro. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate that. No, no, appreciate that, bro. What's up, man? How you doing, man? We get here to say a few words. Hey. So just turn the mic on. It's already on. Okay. It fell off the stand. It's broken, so now you have to hold it. Okay. Hello. Hey guys. How we doing? Good to see everybody. Did we really just clear this place out? This is just us, right? Y'all give it up for Whitley and Carlin. They pretty, ain't they? No, guys, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, you guys know the, the effort and time and energy I put into just trying to help you guys increase volume. Doesn't matter what area you're in, brokerage you're with, none of that stuff matters to me, right? Everything is so far down on the, whoa, everything's so far down on the, on the ladder for me in terms of what I'm trying to accomplish, except for one thing, increasing as many agents' income as I possibly can. Everything else is so far down here. Everybody's like, well, what about this? What about that? It's like, that stuff doesn't even matter, right? I'm up here thinking about this, what I could do to maximize the entire industry. But I want you guys to realize I'm going to always stand up to, to increase volume of as many agents in the industry as I can. I don't care if somebody says, you shouldn't be coaching for free. Why are you coaching for free? That's a ridiculous question in my mind, right? For somebody to even challenge that. But for somebody to say, I'm here to increase, I'm, I'm here to, because I care about the industry, but they're trying to tear me down like I'm a fraud, right? Somebody who has made a major impact on the industry, that tells me you don't really care about the industry, honestly. But that's neither here nor there. I figured a lot of you guys might have watched that debate and I, I urge you to that just so that you can see um, the fact that I'm going to stand firm on my core principles and the foundation that I put in place in terms of just caring about you guys right so um, I want to answer some questions in a minute maybe take a couple questions but honestly I wanted to kind of talk about this for just a second, the fact that we are in a different market than we were 90 days ago, right? This is super exciting. This should be super exciting to you that we're in this different market because how many people here felt like the market last year was really tough? Nobody? Like, like, like how hard was it to go out there and get a listing? Right? And then if you had a buyer, how hard was it to compete against seven other buyers to win the, to win the, 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 the deal? That was a really hard market. I was telling everybody last year, if you can make it through that market, you can make it through any market. That's as hard as it gets. Right now it's getting easier and easier and easier. But you got the people who were complaining about no inventory last year. They're slowly going to start continuing to make the excuse that there's too much inventory, right? Okay. You guys know that the reason right now why inventory is rising, right? It's because we're in a seller denial stage of the market, right? And this seller denial stage is slowly deteriorating as we have more and more data behind things sitting on the market, not selling at certain prices that our next seller wants, okay? So understand this, demand, is still extremely high, right? Because if you look at historically, five months of, of inventory is a balanced market. That, that's balanced between buyers and sellers. Okay, so we're, we're, we're nowhere near close to five months worth of inventory. And if you take out the listings that are overpriced due to the, the new market climate that we're in, we're really below. If we look at viable listings, 
we're way, way, way under, not we're even close. It's still a seller's market. You guys understand this? And it's gonna become, it's gonna stay a seller's market for a while before inventory reaches this five months of inventory level that it's gonna to take to balance the market. Then inventory has to go higher to become a buyer's market, which is going to happen. But it's gonna take a while. This is the sweet spot right now where you can go out. Sellers are more apt to list their properties right now than they were last year. And demand is still extremely high. Do you guys understand how, how, what, what kind of opportunity this is right this second? And if you're not, if you're not changing your, your if, if, you, if you don't realize that and you're not like going harder right now than you have been, then you're missing the boat because this isn't going to last either. And then we're going to be in the next market, the part of the market cycle, and then the next part and the next part. You guys got to be going all in right this second. Now let's talk about recessions for a minute because that, that's the moment that people, that, that the future top, top, top producers, that's where they build their entire business. That's where I built my business, right? You guys know my story. In 2008, I got back in the business. That's when the market crashed, the stock market crashed. That's when I got back in. I was out from 05 to 08. When I got back in, there were foreclosures everywhere. And I went all, that's when I went all in on people. You guys know, know how blessed I, I am to have been born in 1981? Because the fact I was born in 1981 put me becoming an agent in 2002 that, that, that made me go through the, the, the last peak and then crash and lose everything. And it took all that to make me realize that it's relationships over transactions. And then when I got back in at the bottom of the market, I was able to take that philosophy that I learned to apply to that down market and just gobble up market share. That, that moment took me to number one in, in, in Alabama, right, by 2014. The, the fact that I was born in 81 and how the whole thing worked out, you guys gotta understand that I kinda had an advantage because I was born in 1981 to put me through the market during that time to learn those lessons, to take advantage of the down market. Now what happens? This is what happens. The future top producers take a recessionary period. They go all in with what? Creating more relationships with people in the market than anyone else. That's market share. And so if you raise your market share from say 0.001 to say 1% in, in, the, in the retracted market, okay, as the market re-expands, which it will in a massive, massive way, that 1% doubles, quadruples, 5Xs, 10Xs. It's still 1% of the overall market, but it's a lot bigger because the market's larger. Do you understand? I'm gonna be doing so much content through this recessionary period about what we need to be doing as an industry in your individual businesses to take you to the next level because when we come out of this thing, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing for a lot of you that understand what I'm saying. But if you sit back doing the same stuff and you say, oh, I'm not going to make calls because, you know, less transactions this year, it's not going to do us any good. You got to be thinking about five years from now, not this year. This is a major opportunity for your five year uh, uh, from now business. Unless, unless you just don't, you, if you're not thinking five years out, if you're thinking this year, you're thinking less transactions, why make calls? Great. Let all the other ones, let all the other agents think that. We know where we're gonna be in five years. Can I get a hallelujah? Cool. So I'm just, I'm excited to, to be here. I'm excited about the direction of the market. We, we all knew this was gonna come. And if you guys look at my videos, if you go back to, I don't know, if you go back to the pandemic, right? Or, or for so long I was talking about different things, right? Like closings happening every day, regardless of market conditions. What happened during the pandemic? 80% of the same amount of closings, 80% of the same amount of pending deals. During the pandemic, during the 45 day shutdown, I do a video, we're fixing to see the largest real estate surge we've ever seen. It's still on YouTube in April of 2020, before the, the reopening of the economy. What happened? The largest real estate surge we've ever seen. I'm not saying I'm a fortune teller or a genius or a prophet or anything like that, but I'm saying this stuff, after you've been through so many market cycles, it's really easy to see what's coming next. Right? Um, before interest rates went up 2%, I mean, they're up like 25 to 3% now from where they were. But before that, before that started to happen, I put out a video that said, 
prepare for the upcoming market shift or crash or whatever I said. I was talking about exactly what was fixing to happen. And I'm telling you what's gonna happen right now. Your business is gonna blow up if you'll take what I teach you in Zero to Diamond and go make five new friends with property owners every day and, and collect their information and remarket to them so they never forget who you are. It's real simple stuff. Does anybody here think the, mar the business is super overcomplicated? Does anybody think this business can be super simple? Right? This, this is real simple stuff, but people want to want to make it complicated. A lot of people that make it complicated want you to pay for their program so they can make it uncomplicated for you, right? This is what I want you to do. And then I'll take some questions. I want you to really think about what I say about putting your systems in place around figuring out what works best for you in terms of prospecting. I don't care that you, if you make cold calls or not. It could be video, it could be open house. I don't care what you do. Do I think sitting in a room and calling property owners is the, is the greatest hack in the history of the game? Yeah, because every single Legion avenue that's out there, right, is, it all comes back to creating a list of people. There was a guy who, um, I'm not gonna say his name, but he, He's part of my group, right? And, and I've coached him and tried to get him to make calls and he just can't get in the swing of making calls, right? Well, he came at me and said, hey, you know, I'm really good at content. I wanna do content. I wanna build my business on content. I'm like, great. What do you wanna do? He said, I wanna jump out of a helicopter, do a video, coming up to an open house. And I said, that's awesome. I think you should do it. How much is that gonna cost? Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I said, cool. I said, but, and, and listen, I want you to do that, okay? I said, but here's the thing I want you to understand. When you do that, you know, he wants to make a viral piece of content. I said, when you do that, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna make this viral piece of content if it goes viral, right? Number one, what is viral? You're trying to hit your local market. For something to go viral, it's gotta be like, you know, nationwide, worldwide. But let's just say that it does hit locally of some sorts. It hits. I say, what next? There's gotta be a call to action with that video, whether you're gonna run that thing as an, as an ad, whether you have some kind of call to action in the, in the copy. There's gotta be a call to action somewhere that's gonna collect their information, right? And then, and then that's gonna create a list, and then what are you gonna do with that list? You're gonna sit down for a couple hours and call that list. I said, so you're gonna spend all this time, money, and energy to, co to create a list of people to then sit down and call because you don't want to make calls, right? I said, but here, here's the punchline. It's the same activity either way, except for you want to spend thousands and spend hours and hours and hours when you could just spend those same hours and no money just calling people. You want to spend hours and thousands of dollars to build this list of people to call. I said, but here's the thing. If making that viral piece of video about you jumping out of a helicopter gets you jazzed up, about calling that list, then, then great. If that's what it takes to get you excited enough to call someone, to say, hey, I was the guy that jumped out of the helicopter, man, how you doing, I'm, I'm in real estate, is there anything I can do to help you? If that jazzes you up, if that's what makes you excited about making the calls, then I'm gonna play off that. So what I have to do is I have to figure out what jazzes you up about sitting down and making calls because every single lead gen opportunity, Zillow leads. You're just collecting a list of people in your market to call open houses do the sign-in sheet collect the list of people to call right obsidy realtor.com um, every legion activity right if you do if you do a massive giveaway right if you do a raffle if you do a, a networking event all this is set up so that you can then follow up with a phone call to see if there's an opportunity to do business with them there nothing's gonna happen conversation is the gatekeeper between you and a closing. It's the gatekeeper. No matter what your lead gen source is, it's all gonna come back to the gatekeeper before anything else is gonna happen. And so all I'm saying is, I don't need to jump out of a helicopter to get jazzed up about calling somebody. That actually demotivates me because now I spent thousands of dollars I know I didn't have to spend to get the list of people I could've got for two cents a piece and just call them up and say, hi, I'm Ricky. How are you doing today? What can I do to help you? Right? 
So then it all comes back to just communication, who you are as a person. Can you effectively communicate and show people who you are as a person? Right? Can you communicate that? Because a lot of people who, especially newer people or people that are longtime advocates of the traditional prospecting methods, when, they, when they're talking to their prospects, they're not sounding like their self. They sound like somebody that's just trying to do a deal. And the prospects smell it a mile away. So one thing I want you to take away is, is that you got to go all in. And, you, and the, the amount of conversations was the gatekeeper of all closings. The amount of those gatekeeper situations that you have, the more closings you're going to have. It's real simple math. And so if you can hack the system, this is a hack. You don't have to do all this stuff to create a list of people. You can just, boom, get a list of the exact people you want to do business with and call them for less than two cents a piece. Why would you do anything else? Because you're scared to or, you know, you don't like it. So I'm going to go over here and do this and spend all this time, money, and energy so I can come right back to doing the same thing that you're saying. Skip that. Let's hack the system. Boom. Direct to the source. I'm trying to drill this home for you because I did an email yesterday about it. And it's just something I think about quite often. It's how this is the greatest hack in the history of the real estate because, listen, obviously I believe in social media and video, right? That's why we're all here. Obviously I believe in that. But you use that to go build a brand with real estate agents like I did. Do a little something, something with your real estate business if you want to. But we don't have to go out there and create all this stuff to try to attract people so that we can just sit, at, sit there and call them. I can just call them up and make friends with them right now for nothing. Does this make sense? I don't want to beat a dead horse, but come on, guys. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, again, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm going to hang around for a while, take pictures and all that stuff. But can I get a couple questions maybe? If you guys have any. If not, I'll just... Okay. So there's a question from the live stream. So in this changing market, the question was, how do you make a seller realize they need to maybe start adjusting their prices? You don't. You don't make someone do anything, right? You tell them what the facts are and say, what do you want to do? Um, I get this all the time. Um, uh, there was a deal happening and it was under contract and you know the buyer basically was gonna walk away it was like a million dollar deal it was a hundred thousand dollar swing and and the agent was like how do I make my my seller take this deal because at 900 it's actually a good deal with what's happening in the market they need to take this I'm like yeah but it's their choice they don't have to take it if they don't want to right it, it's their choice it's their property they can do what they want to if you show them the facts the data and say, okay, and this is probably um, people talking about um, stuff that's listed, trying to get them to reduce the price. We're doing it. We're, we're getting reductions. We're getting tons of reductions every week you know, on, on our listings because we're going back to the seller and saying, here's the data. All right, the, your property's been on the market this long, no showings, what do you want to do? We're way off on the price, right? This interest rate thing is a real thing. Here's other listings in the same area, same subdivision, same complex that's been in the market X amount of days, no showings. They're even priced lower. This is our competition. They're priced way lower. They're still not getting any showings. What do you want to do? Um, and then you let them make the decision, right? Here's the punchline to the, that whole equation. Get more listings. Go get more listings. Right? You can't make this seller do anything. That deal's already done. That seller either really wants to sell or he doesn't. That's out of your hands. That's already played out. The future's already played out on that deal. It's done. You've done your job. Now you need to go get 20 more, right? And then you'll sell, you know, 13 of them, and then seven of them won't reduce their price, and I don't really care if it sells or not. And that's their choice, right? Okay, cool. All right, I hope you guys are jazzed up as I am. Um, I'm gonna sit over here. You guys can come and take pictures and say hello or whatever. And uh, yeah, let's keep crushing it, guys. Let's just keep working together and uh, all our dreams are gonna come true. Thank you. Hey, hey, oh, hey.
Ooh. I love you. <laughs>